It's autumn. Do you know what that means? It's mushroom season. If you're anything like me, and I think you are, then you know that one of the most fun things to do outdoors this time of year is to admire all the funky fungi in the forest. But have you ever wondered, what are mushrooms anyway? Where did they come from? Why are they here? If these are questions you need answers to, then don't go anywhere. My friends, welcome to the hidden world of kingdom fungi. And I mean it when I say kingdom. Taxonomically, fungi have their own kingdom, distinct from plants, animals, bacteria, and protists. Make no mistake, mushrooms are not plants, and they certainly aren't vegetables, despite how we organize them at the grocery store. On a cellular level, fungi are actually far more similar to animals than they are to plants. Mushrooms are made of chitin instead of the cellulose found in plants. Chitin manifests elsewhere in nature as the hard exterior of insects and other arthropods. It has nothing to do with plants. Fungi also don't have chlorophyll and they can't synthesize their own food from the sun's energy. On the contrary, fungi take up food from the world around them and use that to synthesize their own heat. And fungi don't grow from seeds like plants do, they grow from spores, which are tiny haploid cells, or cells with only one set of chromosomes. When a spore is released from a mushroom's gills, like those on this oyster mushroom, and lands in a suitably moist place, it germinates. Now here's the crazy part. When a fungus grows, it doesn't immediately grow into the mushrooms or lichens we see in the forest. Those visible parts are just the tip of the iceberg. The real magic happens underground, inside a tree, or in another source of food for the fungus. When a spore germinates, it branches into tiny microscopic threads called hyphae. The hyphae grow and grow until they're a huge complex network called a mycelium. The mycelium is essentially the true body of the fungus. While we only see most mushrooms once a year, those mushrooms' mycelia are still growing strong for the rest of the Earth's trip around the sun. Mycelia can be as small as a grain of rice or as large as several acres. In fact, one of the largest organisms in the world is a honey fungus found in Oregon whose mycelium spans about four square miles. It's been nicknamed the humongous fungus. Rather fitting, I would say. A major difference between fungi and plants and animals is that while plants and animals have two reproductive sexes, fungi have the equivalent of up to thousands, known as mating types. Mating types are a key part of the sheer complexity of the mycelium. This split gill mushroom found in Western North America has tens of thousands of sexes. Of these hundreds or thousands of mating types, only certain ones are reproductively compatible. Each hypha on the mycelium is assigned a mating type, and in order for a fungus to reproduce, it needs its hyphae to find compatible mating types. As the hyphae grow and expand, they search for other hyphae to mate with. When two compatible types touch, they fuse together and produce a mushroom or other fungus fruit. The mushrooms, lichens, yeasts, and molds we see day to day, like this red fly agaric, are merely the reproductive fruit of the fungus. Mushrooms pop up because compatible hyphae have found each other and the fungus is ready to reproduce by spreading its spores. Most mushrooms fruit once a year so the organism can reproduce. Within a mushroom's gills or similar structure, Millions and billions of spores lie in wait for a drop of water or gust of wind to carry them away and begin the fungal life cycle anew. Have you ever found a massive mushroom in your backyard, like one of these poison pax mushrooms, and thought to yourself, I swear that wasn't here yesterday? Don't worry, you haven't lost your mind. It may very well be true. While plants and animals grow through cell division, a slow process, mushrooms have a bit of a different cellular upbringing. The mycelium does grow through cell division, but the mushroom itself grows through cell enlargement. The cells fill up with water and balloon quickly, and this requires very little energy for the organism, and it allows mushrooms to pop up practically overnight. So now you know how fungi exist, but you may still be wondering why they exist. Have you ever heard of a food chain? The sun provides energy for primary producers, or plants, which provide energy for primary consumers, the herbivores, who provide energy for the secondary consumers who eat them, who provide food and energy for the tertiary consumers, or apex predators, who have no natural enemies. So what happens to the tertiary consumers when they die? Where does their energy go? There is one critical element often left out of the food chain diagrams we see in school. I'm talking about fungi, the decomposers. 
Fungi decompose or break down dead plants and animals to return their energy to the earth so it can manifest as new life and the food chain can begin again. The ecological role of fungi is to essentially convert dead plants and animals into plant food which supplies energy to the ecosystem. Fungi take organic matter from debris on the forest floor and turn it into inorganic matter more easily absorbed by plants. Essential nutrients for plants like nitrogen can be found locked inside proteins that plants typically can't absorb. Fungi metabolize those proteins and turn them into soluble nutrients that plants can absorb. And yes, by metabolize, I do mean digest, though fungi don't have stomachs. They digest food on the outside of their bodies by releasing enzymes into their surroundings. Then the food passes through the fungus' cell walls into the hyphae. Now there are three ways fungi can associate with plants. There's symbiosis, saprophytism, and parasitism. Symbiosis, also known as a mycorrhizal association, is where fungi connect to the ends of a plant's roots and they feed each other. The fungus and the plant provide each other with what they can't synthesize or extract from the soil on their own. Typically, mushrooms help the plants extract minerals and water from the soil, and the plant supplies the mushroom with sugar compounds or carbohydrates. For example, the highly sought after underground fruiting Oregon black truffles are important for the health of BC's Douglas fir forests. Saprophytism is the truest decomposition method and is an indirect association with plants. Saprophytic fungi tend to be the ones we find on lawns, rotting wood, and animal waste. The mushroom feeds itself with organic matter from debris and waste, and at the same time returns nutrients to the soil, which can then nourish plants. The lion's mane mushroom, a popular mushroom for eating, grows on logs and stumps to clear forests of excess dead wood. Parasitism is a relationship that can be detrimental to plants, but ultimately healthy and necessary for the ecosystem as a whole. Parasitic mushrooms are those that grow out of trees and feed on their host, with or without killing it. Parasitic fungi are particularly beneficial when they grow on old and unhealthy trees and accelerate their inevitable death, making room for new plant growth. Chicken of the woods mushrooms grow parasitically on trees and cause them to rot and die. In a healthy and balanced ecosystem, these mushrooms prevent overabundance of trees. As we know, fungi can benefit the animal kingdom as well. Many animals rely on fungi as a food source, and some, the fungivores, even rely on it as a primary food source. Many humans enjoy eating mushrooms as well. Humans are also studying potential ways to use fungi in medicines to fight cancer, as ethanol fuel, as vegan leather, as bricks for building, and even to clean oil spills. The popular oyster mushroom, for example, can break down the touch hydrocarbons found in petroleum and soak up some heavy metals like mercury. Keeping in mind all we've learned today, there's no doubt that fungi are an essential part of our ecosystem that we should do our part to protect. To protect fungi in your backyard, you can avoid overtilling the soil in your garden as fungal networks can be found up to about 9 inches deep. You can avoid chemical fertilizer when possible because it damages fungal diversity. And try to plant native plants because they host the widest natural fungal diversity. So when you're walking in the woods this fall, look around to see what kinds of fantastic fungi you can discover. It's thought that mycologists have only discovered about 5% of the Earth's fungi species. So who knows? Look hard enough and you might just find something new. But remember, never pick or eat wild mushrooms unless you're with a trained professional. Looks can be deceiving in kingdom fungi and mistakes can be deadly. Stay safe out there and have fun, guys!